man. This is stupid cool. I can't wait to get started. Today we're gonna take a look at the brand new 2011 Staccato P Optics Ready model. Who <laughs> thought it would be a good idea to let me play with this? All right, let's do it. So this is the 2011 Staccato P Optics Ready model, but to some of you, that may mean absolutely nothing. 2011? Optics Ready? So let's dig into what this is and why it's special. The 2011 is a style of pistol that has become extremely popular lately within competition shooters, and it steals almost all of its features from the 1911. What you know about two world wars? and integrates advancements in the 9mm cartridge bullet technology on that legacy 1911 design. So the name 2011 then just means it's a 1911 that uses a 9mm cartridge and then double stack magazines. So you don't just have like eight rounds in the magazine. As the 2011s easily hold 17 to 20 rounds in the included magazines. The Staccato P we're showing today then is that style of 2011 that operates in single action only. Now, what is that? I'll go through all that when we go through the actual functionality of everything. <laughs> anyway, what makes the Staccato P special is it's actually aimed for duty use with a target towards military and law enforcement with a price tag that isn't too insane. My issue though is I always considered these to be like, you know, race guns. And if any of you have had a street car that you turned into a race car, you quickly realize that maintenance and care becomes a huge priority. And on a duty gun, well, ideally I'd love this as my like end of world gun. Anyway, having a duty gun that needs constant care, cleaning and special attention would be a little bit problematic. My P320 just runs. I don't clean it, and I expect it to give me peak performance in every situation and at every moment that I need it. And it always delivers, even when it's getting abused. So let's see if the Staccato P can live up to that same level of performance and act as a duty pistol. So tell you what though, let's start by going backwards and I'll show you everything that comes with the Staccato P. We'll go over the features of the pistol and I'll show you the pistol functionality. And then we'll go out and actually shoot it and I'll give you my first impressions. As I said though, this is the optics ready model. And I do have a Holosun 509T ready to roll. But I want to do our first shots without any optics installed, and then we can add the 509T later and then compare those two experiences. Don't miss that Holosun 509T review. It's got some interesting frustrations. But let's get started and I'll show you everything you get with the Staccato P Optics Ready model. The first thing you'll notice that's a little different is that you get a nice soft case with the cool Staccato 2011 logo embroidered on the front. I really like the soft cases for when I'm going to the range, and then I use the hard cases for like air travel. <laughs> As I'm not currently traveling on airplanes with this, this works for me much better. I try to avoid those big obnoxious plastic cases whenever I can. Opening up everything in here, we see assortment of our different notes and pamphlets and whatnots that give a quick overview of the Staccato P and lube points on the pistol. Underneath the main pouch, we also see there are three included mags, one 20 round magazine and two 17 round magazines. Now these magazines are all in stainless steel, so that should help in dropping free from the pistol. Yep. And if you're wondering where the Achilles heel of the 2011 design was, they kind of made this style of pistol never really make it to mainstream it was the magazines. And it seems like Staccato has done a lot of cool designs and hopefully they fixed all the problems to make this a truly viable duty pistol. Okay, so what's next? We have the pistol, oh wait, we have this front pocket here. Inside here is all the instruction manuals. Oh, here's a pistol accuracy test where they show a three shot test with what looks like, oh, 115 grain rounds. Also included are various tools, gun oil, and tools to work and replace your optics. I'll put a video together soon for disassembly, reassembly, and cleaning and all that also. And also included is a lock to keep the firearm secured when not in a safe or a secured room. Okay, enough of this. 
let's get to the pistol. The pistol is held in the pouch with two Velcro straps that secure it for transport. The first thing you'll notice is this black diamond-like coating that covers the entire frame and slide. This coating can apparently take some serious abuse. No, I'm not testing it, <laughs> you psychopaths. Starting from the bottom of the grip and working our way forward, we see the integrated magwell that comes standard with the Staccato P. I've seen a few magwells that do, well, nothing, but this magwell actually functions really well and allows the magazine to be inserted in all sorts of stupid angles without any issues. This is the first one I've seen that works as good as my P320X carry in terms of reload assisting. Moving to the grip, it uses a moderately aggressive stippling that incorporates the staccato logo into the grip. The first thing you're going to notice with the grip though is that this thing absolutely nails the ergonomics and that grip angle. Like, this presentation is just on point and extremely natural. It's just right where it needs to be, like every time. I did find the grip could have been more aggressive as having wet or sweaty hands make it a bit tougher to grip. The grip module is polymer and can be swapped out or stippled if you find you need a more aggressive grip texture. We then have a nice hefty rear tang that we see on our 1911s along with our hammer and grip safety. So then let's dive into some of the operation and let's start with this single action only and what exactly that is. In current pistols, you'll find a few different common types of pistols at the store. One of the most popular is the striker fired pistol. Striker fired means the trigger is the same pull strength on each trigger pull and you don't need to do anything special as there's no rear hammer. Just reset the slide and reset the trigger. Then there is double action single action. This means that the first pull is double action as it pulls the hammer down through part of the trigger pull, then the remaining trigger pull releases the hammer. The first double action pull is usually a lot longer and has a lot more pressure, so you really have to train into that on the double action single action. But then after that first pull, since the hammer will be down, after that it'll be single action. Which means the trigger just releases the hammer to fire, and it's usually a very short pull with a crisp reset. So the Staccato P is single action only, so that means if you don't reset the hammer, it doesn't do anything. To engage the hammer, you have to reset it by either racking the slide or by resetting the hammer manually. Now, having this configuration with single action only, I can understand why they included the thumb safety and I can see its usefulness in this configuration. Let's continue on with the functionality though and let's take a look at the slide. The slide includes two serrated areas, one at the rear and one at the front. So you can manipulate the slide from the rear or from the front for full on cool guy points. In reality, I use the front serrations whenever I have a red dot installed because that way I don't actually mess up the actual zero of the red dot. It probably doesn't actually impact it in any way, but why risk it? <laughs> I like doing it the cool guy way anyway. The Staccato P also uses a flush bull barrel to aid in accuracy and recoil control. The Staccato P also uses a toolless guide rod that is tuned exactly to this platform. That's right, even the guide rod is tuned specifically for the Staccato P, and you can actually get some different poundage springs from Dawson Precision if you wanna shoot some heavier rounds or <laughs> lighter competition rounds, you know who you are. The last bit is this model is the Optics Ready model, which includes multiple adapter plates available for purchase that can be swapped out. If you choose not to, the front optic is a green fiber optic from Dawson Precision with the blacked out rear sights. If you do an adapter plate though, the entire rear sight is actually attached to the adapter plate. So whichever adapter plate you pick, like the RMR or the Delta Point Pro, whatever, it's gonna include the rear sight on that actual adapter plate. So then you will be co-witnessing, you don't have to worry about any of your iron sights when you get the appropriate adapters. Moving over to the functionality on the actual grip, we see the magazine release on the left side of the pistol. We can swap this. What do you mean no? So no, it's not swappable to the other side. And as a lefty, I'm gonna have to train into this, which is probably how I should have trained from the beginning. I found the button is not super comfortable if you come at it and catch the edge. And also the button doesn't work well if you come at it from any sort of angle. You right-handed folks out there won't have any sort of problem. 
it works great. I'll just have to train into this, and I'll do a little video on some left-handed weapon manipulation. Once I sort it out. The safety is at least ambi for when I want to accidentally engage in a bunch. I certainly don't prefer safeties, but on the Staccato P with the single action only, it makes more sense, and the Staccato does a nice job on the safety switch by offering it in an ambidextrous configuration. The safety offers a nice clear tactile and audible click. And even though I joke about it, it would be pretty difficult to engage this rear safety by accident. The, the rear grip safety also works great by offering just the right amount of pressure by not allowing the firearm to fire when the grip safety isn't engaged, but then just a small amount of pressure and it'll fire just fine. It's perfect. Moving to the slide stop, the lever works well, but is placed fairly far up the slide, making manipulation a little bit challenging. You right-handed folks are going to either have to grow your fingers or do some weird off-handed slide manipulation. But for me and my lefty boys out there, no, not a problem. Oh, and also, do not do that without some sort of dummy round in the chamber. I had snap caps, see? Oh, now for the best part, this absolutely badass trigger. And the trigger design and operation continues with the iconic 1911 style. Oh, two world wars again! That ditches the angled trigger design and instead uses a straight back trigger pull. Now, this trigger goes straight forward and backwards, and this is huge for accuracy because you get all sorts of people who will actually pull the trigger back and they won't pull the trigger back exactly straight. And this will cause your bullets to pull off target at the very last second as you pull the trigger to the rear. But why am I shooting low left? You can expect a huge increase in consistent accuracy as the trigger pull is gonna be the same every single time. Looking first at the wall, there's about a millimeter or two before you're up against it. Then you pull through for a super short and clean trigger pull. It's great, and then we have our trigger reset, and it's really, really nice. The trigger has a super short reset travel and feels like it lightly pushes your finger back into position. Is that it? I think that's it. All right. So let's take this out to the range and see what it can do as we fire off some shots in this pure out of the box configuration. I'm not sure if you guys are excited as me, but I'm ready for this. All right, so I think we're all set up. I have the target set up about 10 or 15 yards away. Let's do five or six rounds and just kind of see how the accuracy goes. I got a little over enthusiastic and forgot to turn the cameras on. <laughs> yeah, let's do some fast ones. Now remember too, I'm not a particularly good iron sight shooter, so <laughs> we have that too. All right, top right target. So I'm definitely hanging them high and to the right, so I'll have to work on that. Oh, yeah, and I'm shooting 124 grains. I need to shoot 114 grains. I know, I know. All right, let's keep going. Middle target, it's time. Middle target again. All right, we got this teeny tiny target and I'm shooting with irons, but let's try to do some rapids towards the bottom one. <laughs> not, very, not very rapid. I am not good with irons. And bottom target one more time. And top right. Oh, one small bit I want to tell you about. There's the Staccato P Guns Out Challenge, where if you share yourself shooting the Staccato P on their special targets and upload it and tag it on social media, 
you can actually win your own staccato P pistol. I'm serious, I'm not kidding around. So tell you what, let's use our guns out challenge. We'll do five shots in the left circle, five shots in the right, and then try to do one in each of the small circles. Oof, pulled that one. Wow, I aimed horribly, and you're probably not supposed to do this challenge at 15 yards, but I tell you what, I'm having too much fun, uh, I don't even care. i uh, tell you what though, let's just do some more rapid shots and get the feel for the staccato P. S&B, 124 grains, nothing special on ammo, it ran perfectly fine, so. <laughs> okay, this thing is absolutely stupid fun. I will say though that I had to go back to the drawing board and rework my grip and form and issues that showed up as I was shooting today. And I have an awesome video to bring you on all the mistakes I was making out there and what exactly I did to fix them. Keep an eye out for that one as I'm pretty sure it's gonna help out everyone to some degree with everything I was doing wrong. Okay, so let's do the pros, cons, and do I recommend it. So let's start with the first pro, and that is absolutely the included magazines. As the magazine is known for being the Achilles heel of the 2011 platform, it was great to see the Staccato P magazines perform so well. The magazines fed all the rounds cleanly, and they dropped straight from the pistol. Honestly, they just work great. I had zero malfunctions with these magazines, but we only did about 250 rounds. We'll keep an eye on it as we continue our testing. So for my next pro is these amazing Dawson Precision iron sights and that optic plate itself. While I prefer red dots, the blacked out rear iron sight and fiber optic front sight offer a great contrast and easy to see front sight. I like how they use green also, so it won't make a mess of the same red color when I add the Holosun 509T. The badass Dawson Precision cover plates also includes a rear sight, so you'll always have your optic at the correct height and not have to worry about co-witness. <laughs> I'm hoping I'm going to be a whole lot more accurate when I put the Holosun 509T on there. <laughs> Alright, so the next pro is the insanely crisp controls and this amazing trigger. It would be impossible to explain and express how amazing this trigger is. You really just have to feel it to believe it. By having the trigger be this simple and clean, it cleans up your consistency and helps you put round after round on target accurately. If you don't shoot all crappy like I did. But it does go to show you, just because you get a better gun doesn't mean you become a better shooter. Okay, everybody's favorite part. This is the cons part. Uh, so the first con, magazine release. This is mostly a me problem, so it's not really fair to call it a con, but the button has no angled side and has only raised edges that definitely have a bite. If I don't go with the magazine release directly straight on, it just tells me no and does nothing. I have to do some wonkiness to get my hand into position to make the reload work properly. So uh, my next con is the generally wonky weapon manipulation. Now, this just may be my own unfamiliarity with 1911s, but both left-handed and right-handed folks will have to do some sort of training to adapt into these controls as they're not entirely intuitive to execute. The slide stop being so far forward will be a hurdle that right-handers will need to train through, and the left-handed guys will have to find a magazine release solution. But the safety you may not want is ambi, so <laughs> there's that. 
I wouldn't really call it a con if it only affected left-handed shooters, as I should be training into right-handed weapon manipulation anyway, but my right-handed shooters out there have to do some goofy stuff too. Okay, so for the next con is this weirdo dangly thing that comes when you disassemble and reassemble. I'll get to this later when we show the disassembly, cleaning, and assembly video, but this thing here is an absolute pain. It just floats in space and you have to try to line it up and results in shaking and jiggling and praying. It's definitely an art and it shouldn't be this difficult. There we go. Uh, the other con is that the tight tolerance of this pistol give me pause when I consider using it as a duty weapon. I did have some issues with the disconnector acting a bit odd, and it was remedied with a good cleaning and cycling the disconnector through a few cycles. But it did cause some weird things to happen with the hammer and the slide anytime I would cycle the slide manually until I cleaned it all up. <laughs> to Staccato's credit though, I may have overlubed it, and it could be my fault. But having a duty weapon stoppage due to an extra drop of lube or shell casing debris would be a huge concern. And then there's the con that's the elephant in the room, the cost. This is actually a relatively inexpensive 2011 at about $2,500 and is significantly more costly than the tried and proven duty weapons of the Glock and the SIG P320. You have to make the decision for yourself if it's worth the cost. But it is worth noting that you're paying four to five times the cost of guns that run just as well albeit not nearly as accurate or have that refined trigger and recoil control. Hell, even I could shoot it fast doing pretty much everything wrong. Honest Outlaw also just did a crazy good review if you wanna see what an actual good shooter can do with this thing. It's pretty crazy. So do I recommend it? Oh, tell you what, the jury's really out on this one. Uh, it has a crazy crisp trigger. I love the recoil control, but I tell you what, it also has a price tag that goes along with those features. And I want to be able to confidently answer that question of, can I use it as a duty weapon? With the round count and accuracy I've seen so far, I'd be more than inclined to say yes but I did have some issues where the common user would need to be a whole lot smarter to give the staccato P the proper care and feeding, seeing how even I managed to mess it up. So stay tuned as I continue our staccato P duty pistol test and take the staccato P out of its basic form and add the Holosun 509T red dot. The folks at LA Police Gear were also nice enough to supply a Streamlight TLR9 that we'll be adding to this build also. And you can use discount code TLD10 for any streamlights you find on the LA Police Gear website. Plus, we'll wrap that whole setup in a badass holster from HCM Holsters, and then hopefully we can take that whole setup outside and answer that question of, does this thing really work as a duty pistol option? In later videos, I want to show some disassembly with cleaning and aftercare done the right way, and those left-handed weapon manipulation videos. Maybe we can even record me going to my first competition or two so all of you can watch me lose. So there's still a lot of fun to have with this pistol, and I hope this video was helpful for you if you are looking into 2011s or specifically the Staccato P, which I think is a fantastic pistol. So I wanna say thanks to all of our Patreon supporters. You are absolutely amazing, and I thank you all for your commitment to our channel and everything that you do. And I wanna thank everyone that likes, comments, and subscribes. Comment down below what you think about the Staccato P and if it would be a good duty weapon to use. All right, everyone, all shout. Two World Wars.